Please be seated. Proceedings are resumed. Recognize Honorable Minister responsible for community affairs continuing his debate. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there were a couple points that I wanted to do my best to give clear guidance on. One raised by the member from Northside was to do with the under 65 issue that is someone who had not reached retirement age but were deemed to be covered under this policy. And that was due to the fact that, bearing in mind we had just recently expanded the age to 65, the committee felt that to ensure that these persons who have retired before 65, including those who may have left the, the workforce on medical or similar grounds, weren't disenfranchised or excluded from the policy. So that was the, the logic behind including them. In relation to the makeup of the council, uh, a couple of members mentioned that, the leader of the opposition, as well as, as uh, the, the member from Northside and the member from East End. The, composition of the council is set out in, in what I originally read as the background to the bill. And I think that the reason that the, the committee did the, the seniors, the senior reps from the districts on that council is to ensure and to also make the chair of that council an older person is to ensure that we have good representation from the senior uh, group island wide because if we do not have those those folk on there and we are looking to tell them what they need as, as younger people they, they are the ones that are best placed to know exactly the services that older persons need and I also think that the fact that so many people were involved in the original exercise, that they have a large pool of responsible people that have contributed to this point, and there will not be any worry about the, the, the type of people or the, the composition or the ability of those people to contribute uh, in a meaningful way. Madam Speaker, the important thing to note as I said, is that this legislation is but a spoke in the wheel. We have further legislation to come, very detailed legislation, but it was important that we get something on the statute books at this time to ensure that this process continues regardless, come what may. Madam Speaker, the policy sets out clearly a lot of the issues that were identified by the committee in relation to older persons. And as I said, this policy was tabled, so I'm going to refer to it for the on the last few pages and just outline for the listening public some of the, and, and the members of this house some of the benefits and some of the issues that have been identified in terms of recommendations and strategies Before formulating the draft policy, Madam Speaker, it says that efforts should be made to engage the wider community on a district basis, target, targeting the opinions, ideas, and issues of older persons who may be facing issues regularly. So that, that was what was done. And we have made this a priority in terms of the, the ministry. When I, when I took over the ministry, uh, the older policy had been started, but it was languishing, to say the least, and I lit the fire under it to make sure that 
we had because of the importance that I place personally as well as the ministry on our older persons, those who I work with in the district and members here from my district know how much we value our older people in the contributions that they make in the district of Bowdoin Town and island-wide, the amount of events that the Department of Children and Family Services put on and the things that we do to encourage their active participation. Uh, this, the policy speaks to, to funding being identified and approved for support services and programs. Um, it speaks to legislation that we're bringing here now and, and more to come to be developed and implemented to address the needs of older persons, including care and protection, uh, to free them from any form of discrimination and the potential risk of harm and abuse. It says it speaks to developing a supportive and reliable public transport service to assist older persons through the districts, promoting the independence, dignity, and inclusion of them. Um, it speaks to the advocacy to promote and address issues impacting older persons so that older persons have a voice and they must be given opportunities to exercise their rights as citizens of the Cayman Islands. Creating a national commission for older persons to address and manage the fears of older persons and for the commission to be led by them. Older persons should have representation on government boards and committees to promote the issues impacting older persons in society local media to be more involved in promoting the issues impacting older persons and to promote all aspects of healthy aging. Acknowledge the synergy between the needs of older persons and persons with disabilities and similar policies on provision of parking, use of toilet facilities, discounted benefits, which a number of members spoke about today, should also be considered. Uh, developing legislation to support advanced directives and preparation of living wills Older persons should maintain a quality standard of living equal to pre-retirement for retirees. Promotion of services and programs with emphasis on older persons, such as increased partnerships in the community to meet the needs of older persons, develop an education campaign on the needs of older persons, encourage diversity of free programs and services for older persons, and utilizing the community development officers to coordinate these programs. Example, agricultural, religious workshops, intergenerational interactions, that is, having them interact with our youth, opportunities to retool skills, education, promote regular services in the communities for older persons, the needs assessment unit to increase its resources and to offer a wide time frame to clients who are seeking assistance, to expand on all services being offered, strengthen the database on the needs of older person in each district. And when we talk about the voluntary register, I think that is one of the things, those are the type of things that that can be used for because those, that register will identify the particular characteristics of, of, those, of those folk and will help the, the committee or the council to know exactly what it is those needs are. Use existing public facilities within communities to run older persons, clubs, and centers. This is something that I've particularly pushed on as minister, uh, referring to adult daycare centers and the like. Provide a focal point for older persons and in, uh, allow them to, to get into, a lot of them would not know, would not be that au fait with computers, to train them, those who are willing and able, and to tran trans transmit traditions and culture to the younger generations, as I mentioned earlier. Um, brainstorming with them, and in particular to look after their needs in the time of, of inclement weather and, and the like. Churches, service clubs, young people associations, financial services, hospitality associations, seafarers association, cultural organization, should pull together with other government entities, example, 
the DCFS to advocate for and respond to the needs of these older persons. Develop of life, development of lifelong learning opportunities for older persons. Um, MLAs should have a list of opportunities and benefits, services available for older persons at their offices to assist with the education of services. So that's how we can play our part. Older persons may have many years experience that can be put to use and benefit the Cayman Islands and we talked about the various employment opportunities that exist. And older persons uh, do expect to be taken care of by their adult children and where possible this, this should be the case unless you know there's no option and then they end up in a retirement home. So that is one of our traditional values that we have found has been eroded and it's something that we would encourage where possible to look after those older persons in, our own, in their own homes or in our homes as we used to. And the younger generation needs to be properly educated and fed more vital information pertaining to older persons' dignity, participation, social and communal care. Families uh, talked about the, the lack of the, the families uh, respecting and, and valuing them in, in today's Cayman. So, Madam Speaker, it goes on to talk about safety and protection of older persons. I, I went through a number of those points, uh, skipped through them, but basically to give members and, and the listening public an understanding that this is a very, very comprehensive exercise that took place to fill out that 65-page policy, and I don't think there are very many stones left unturned because it included those older persons in the districts and they were very, very keen, and I sat into some of those sessions, and their input was, was quite amazing, and to see it through their eyes, and to, to, for them to tell, to speak to the things that they needed and they felt that would make their lives better. So it is very important that we do put it in the legislation, because I think just, just having a policy on its own is, is, is one thing, is, is basically an expression of interest, but when you have it in legislation, then the country can say and can boast that we are indeed looking after our older folk. Uh, something that uh, my colleague from Georgetown, the sixth elected member mentioned was the fact that he found that they were getting three months uh, insurance coverage. That has been amended to three years where you know, the status of an older person is not going to change. I, had to, I gave a directive on that. Uh, you know, no sense assessing them three months, three months, three months. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You're only stressing them out. So that has been changed to a recommendation of three years in most cases. So they're quite happy now to be receiving their cynical coverage for a much longer period. And it saves a lot of time administratively for sure. Uh, I was so happy to hear the, the second elected member from Georgetown speak to his greater appreciation because of his own experience, because of him living it with his parents, the fact that the need for information and the support for our older persons, we have to face it that we are now in a day of better health care and we will have people living longer and therefore our attention on that age group needs to be quite focused and understanding their needs, Madam Speaker. So Madam Speaker, I think that the members here today have certainly contributed very, very well to this debate. The, the fact that this initial piece of legislation came today is probably a really good thing in that it now piques the awareness and the consciousness of all of us here and to listen to your input and value it. And I'm sure my staff who are here in the chamber are also very excited. And I'm sorry, I have to give apologies to Ms. Debbie Webb, who is off, uh, off island, I think, not just off work, but off island, because she would have been here beaming today to see your enthusiasm for something that has been a real passion of hers and something that she has put tremendous effort and determination into. I cannot speak enough to her commitment to this process and the way she's once I said go the way she's driven me and everyone else around her 
sometimes her emails can be quite lengthy, but I can tell you it were, they were very comprehensive and they made a lot of sense. And it's because of her determination and all of those who supported her, my CFO and all of the team and the stakeholders from the public who played their important part. Some of them were so keen that they actually continued from when the steering committee was first formulated before we took office actually. And they, they, they continued on to the new steering committee when it was set back up. So they, they themselves said to me on more than one occasion, we hope that this is not just a futile uh, effort and this is gonna end up on a shelf somewhere and all this time and effort we put in is gonna be wasted. And I, I gave them that assurance that would not be the case. So Madam Speaker, a, with a great deal of pride and uh, um, commitment and sense of ownership that I, that I take and I present this bill to this honorable house for safe passage and I want to thank each and every one who has worked to make it possible to have it here today and I want to thank yourself and the members here for their commitment and their contributions on this very important stage and this very important milestone for these Cayman Islands. I thank you Madam Speaker. The question is that a bill shortly entitled the Older Persons Bill 2017 be given a second reading. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against no, the ayes have it. The Older Persons Bill 2017 has been given a second reading. Recognize the Honorable Premier. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as I have indicated to, to, the, uh, to yourself and to my colleagues, I and the Honorable Attorney General and other members, not members of the House, but other members of, of the government team, will travel to London on Wednesday night. I have to, I've been asked to do a, a keynote address at a major event in London on Friday. And the following Monday, I hope to meet with representatives of the Foreign Combat Office and possibly the minister concerned, as well as to attend the annual general meeting of the APPG, the All Parties Parliamentary Group, which we have now reformed. But Madam Speaker, one of the things that we wish to do on that trip is to brief the minister and FCO uh, personnel about where we've reached in terms of our preparation uh, to deal with the, with the deadline with respect to the beneficial ownership issue and the, the putting into place of the necessary legislation to enable our law enforcement agencies in Cayman to be able to provide the information on request to the UK counterparts. And Madam Speaker, the Companies Amendment Number Two, Bill 2016, the Companies Management Amendment Number Two, Bill 2016, and the Limited Liability Companies Amendment Bill 2016, which have passed their second readings, are key components of of that overall exercise. And we wish, I certainly wish for those bills to be passed by this Honorable House in advance of, of my trip to London so that I can report that those things have been done. And so Madam Speaker, with, with the approval of the House, I would wish for the, the agenda, the, the order paper for today, to be that the order of business to be to be changed so that we could move to the committee stage on those three bills this afternoon and then to their third reading. And so Madam Speaker, I, I move a motion in those terms that the order paper be adjusted 
so that the House may resolve itself into committee to consider the Companies Amendment Number 2, Bill 2016, the Companies Management Amendment Number 2, Bill 2016, and the Limited Liability Companies Amendment Bill 2016. And then, Madam Speaker, to proceed to their third reading. The question, <clears throat> the question is, is that the order of business as it appears on today's order paper be adjusted to allow the House to go into committee to consider the three bills as just stated by the Honorable Premier, which will allow him to report to the UK on his trip next week. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those against? No. The ayes have it. <clears throat> the motion is carried. That's with the understanding that after committee is finished, we will come back to the House to go through the other stages of the bill and do the proper adjournment of this House. The House will now go into committee. Please be seated. <laughs> With the leave of the House, may I assume that as usual, we would authorize the Honorable Attorney General to correct minor errors as such, the like in these bills. Will the clerk please state the bill and read the relevant clauses? <clears throat> The Companies Amendment Bill 2016, Clause 1, Short Title and Commencement. The question is, is that clause one stand part of the bill? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against, no. The ayes have it. Clause one now stand part of the bill. Clause two, amendment of the principal law, insertion of a new part. Part 17E. There's an amendment, a clause two, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, in accordance with the provisions of standing orders, or standing order 52, one and two, I, the Minister of Financial Services, Commerce and Environment, give notice to move the following amendments to the company's amendment number two bill, 2016. That clause two of the bill be amended as follows. A, in the proposed section 244, uh, Roman 1, in the definition of beneficial owner, by deleting the words section 247, um, subsection 2, and substituting the words section 247, subsection 2, comma, subsection 3, and subsection 4. Two, in the definition of <coughs> beneficial ownership register, by deleting the words respecting and substituting the words containing the required particulars of. 
Three, by deleting the definition of competent authority and substituting the following definition. Competent authority means the minister referred to in section 246, um, subsection 1, and includes the person designated by the minister under that section. Four, in the definition of legal entity, by deleting the words body corporate, comma, firm, and substituting the words company, comma, limited liability company. Five, by deleting the definition of registrable persons and substituting the following definition. Registrable person means an individual or relevant legal entity that is a registrable person under section 251. Six, in the definition of required particulars by deleting the words an individual or legal entity and substituting the words a registrable person. And seven, in the definition of specified conditions by deleting the words section 247, subsection 2, and substituting the words section 247, subsection 2, comma, subsection 3, and subsection 4. In the proposed section 245, In subsection 1, A, by deleting the words in the islands that are registered under the company's law 2016 revision, except a company or subsidiary of a company, and substituting the words or registered by way of continuation under this law, except a legal entity or subsidiary of one or more legal entities, each of which is. B, by deleting the marginal note 2016 revision in parentheses and uh, opposite the introductory words, and C, by deleting the paragraph C and substituting the following paragraphs, C, managed, comma, arranged, comma, administered, comma, operated or promoted by an approved person as a special purpose vehicle, comma, private equity fund, comma, collective investment scheme or investment fund. And C, A, that is a general partner of a vehicle, comma, fund or scheme referred to in paragraph C that is managed, arranged, administered, comma, operated or promoted by an approved person or, a semicolon or. D, by deleting the marginal note 2015 revision in parentheses opposite paragraph C. Two, by inserting after subsection one the following subsection. One A, in this section approved person means a person or a subsidiary of a person that is A, regulated, registered, or holding a license in the islands under a regulatory law, as defined in Section 2 of the Monetary Authority Law 2016 revision, or regulated in a jurisdiction listed in Schedule 3 of the Money Laundering Regulations 2015 revision, or B, listed on the Cayman Islands Stock Exchange, or an approved stock exchange in Schedule 4. And Three, in subsection two, A, by deleting the words another company and substituting the words one or more legal entities described in subsection one. B, by deleting paragraph A, comma B and C and substituting the following paragraphs. A, such legal entities separately or collectively hold in excess of 75% of the shares or voting rights in company S. B, each such legal entity is a member of company S, and separately or collectively, such legal entities have the right to appoint or remove a majority of its board of directors. Or C, it is a subsidiary of one or more legal entities, each of which is itself a subsidiary of one or more legal entities described in subsection one. 
see in the proposed section 247, one by inserting after subsection 1, the following subsection 1A, for the purposes of identifying individuals who are beneficial owners under subsection 1, a company is entitled to rely without further inquiry on the response of a person to a notice in writing sent in good faith by the company, unless the company has reason to believe that the response is misleading or false. Two, in subsection 2, um, A, by deleting the semicolon at the end of paragraph C and substituting a full stop, and B, deleting <laughs> paragraphs D and E. And three, by inserting after subsection two the following subsections. Three, if no individual meets the conditions in subsection two, X is a beneficial owner of a company. Y, if X has the absolute X is a beneficial owner of a company of company Y if X has the absolute and unconditional legal right to exercise or actually exercises significant influence or control over company Y through the ownership structure or interest described in subsection 2 other than solely in the capacity of a director, professional advisor or professional manager. For if no individual meets the conditions in subsections 2 and 3 but the trustees of a trust or the members of a partnership or other entity that under the law by which it is governed is not a legal person, meet one of those conditions in relation to company Y in their capacity as such. X is a beneficial owner of company Y if X has the absolute and unconditional legal right to execute or actually exercises significant influence or control over the activities of that trust or partnership or other entity other than solely in the capacity of a director, professional advisor, or professional manager. D, in the proposed section 248, one by inserting after subsection 1, the following subsection, 1A, for the purpose of identifying relevant legal entities under subsection 1, a company is entitled to rely without further inquiry on the response of a legal entity to a notice in writing sent in good faith by the company, unless the company has reason to believe that the response is misleading or false. And two, by deleting subsection two and substituting the following subsection two, a relevant legal entity in relation to a company is a legal entity that A is incorporated, formed or registered, including by way of continuation or as a foreign company in the islands under the laws of the islands and B would be a beneficial owner of the company if it were an individual. E in the proposed section 249, one in subsection one by inserting after the word notice, the words in writing, two in subsection two by inserting, uh, inserting before the words sorry, before the word particulars, the word required, three by deleting subsection three and substituting the following subsection. Three, a company may also give notice in writing to a registered shareholder or a legal entity that the company knows or has reasonable cause to believe that it is a relevant legal entity in relation, sorry, to believe is a relevant legal entity in relation to that company or would be a relevant legal entity if it were re registered under this law, if the company knows or has reasonable cause to believe that such shareholder or legal entity knows the identif identity of a registrable person. Five in subsection 4b by deleting the words such persons and substituting the words such registrable persons. Sorry, that's four. Um, Five in, in, in subsection five, A by deleting paragraph A and substituting the following paragraph A, the company knows that the individual or entity is not a registrable person or B in paragraph B by deleting the words uh, semicolon or and substituting a full stop and C by deleting paragraph C and six in subsection six B by deleting the words 
whether within or outside of the islands, <laughs> and substituting the words applicable in the islands. F, in the proposed section 2501 uh, in subsection 1, by deleting paragraph A and substituting the following paragraph A, the person is a registrable person in respect to a company to which this part applies. Two, in subsection two, by deleting the words, unless not a registrable person. G, by deleting the proposed subsection, sorry, the proposed sections 251 to 253, and substituting the following section, 2511. The following are registrable persons in relation to a company. A, an individual whom the company identifies pursuant to section 247 as a beneficial owner of the company. B, a relevant legal entity identified by the company pursuant to section 248 that one holds an interest in the company or meets one or more of the specified conditions directly in respect of that company. And two, through which any beneficial owner or relevant legal entity indirectly owns an interest in the company. Two, whether a person holds an interest in a company or meets a specified condition in relation to the company, directly or indirectly, shall be determined in accordance with the regulations. H, in the proposed section 254, uh, one in subsection three, by deleting the word local, and substituting the words ordinary resident. Two, in subsection four, by deleting the words a local and substituting the words an ordinary resident. And three, by deleting subsection five and the marginal note 2015 revision in parentheses opposite it. I, in the proposed section 255, uh, subsection four, one, by deleting paragraph A and substituting the following. A, the company has reasonable grounds to believe that they were supplied or confirmed by the individual or entity to whom the particulars relate. And two, in paragraph B, A, by inserting after the words company, the words and the company has reasonable grounds to believe that this was done. And B, by inserting after the word entity, the words to whom the particulars relate. J, in the proposed section 256, uh, one in subsection one, A, in paragraph A, by deleting the word name and substituting the words full legal name. And B, in paragraph D, by inserting before the semicolon, the following words, comma, including, uh, Roman 1, identifying number. 2, country of origin. 3, date of issue and, exp and of expiry. And 2, in subsection 3E, by deleting the words relevant legal entity and substituting the word person. K, in the proposed section 257, one in subsection one by inserting after the word particulars, the word required. Two in subsection two by deleting the words or entity. Three in subsection three, A in paragraph A by deleting the words be registrable and substituting the words be a registrable person. And B in paragraph B by inserting after the word particulars, the word required. And, four, and five, in subsection 4A, by inserting before the word particulars, the word required. L, in the proposed section 258, one, by deleting subsection two and substituting the following two. On receipt of a notice under subsection one, the company shall provide the corporate services provider or the registrar, as the ca case may be, with A, the missing particulars required under section 255 or 257 pertaining to registrable persons, and B, a justification or a correction respecting any statement identified in the notice. And two in subsection three, A, by deleting the introductory words before the dash, 
and substituting the following. Three, if a company fails due to the failure of a registrable person to comply with their obligations under this law, to provide the missing particulars referred to in subsection 2A within one month of a receipt of the notice, the company shall, and B, by deleting the words interest and substituting the words relevant interest. M, in the proposed section 259, one in subsection 1, A, by deleting the words or relevant legal entities, and B, in paragraph B, by inserting after the word occurs, the words with respect to the person, and two in subsections two and three by deleting the words or relevant legal entity. N, in the proposed section 261, one in subsections one and three by deleting the words companies register uh, wherever they appear and substituting the words companies beneficial ownership register. And two, in subsection two, by deleting the word party and substituting the word person. O, in the proposed section 262, one in subsection one, by inserting before the word all, the words information on. And two, by deleting subsection 2B and substituting the following, B, uh, be able to search all company beneficial ownership information provided to the competent authority by corporate service providers or the registrar by the name of an individual, a, a legal entity or company, and P, by deleting the proposed section 263 and substituting the following section. A corporate services provider engaged by a company pursuant to section 254 or the registrar if so engaged shall provide an information technology solution either directly or through another corporate services provider that enables the corporate services provider or registrar, as the case may be, A, to establish and maintain the company's beneficial ownership register on its behalf, and B, to provide the information on the beneficial ownership register to the competent authority by way of the search platform established pursuant to section 262. Q, in the proposed Section 264, one in subsection 1A, by deleting paragraphs D and E and substituting the following paragraph, D, the Tax Information Authority designated under Section 4 of the Tax Information Law 2016 revision. Two, in subsection 2, by deleting all the words after the word certifies and substituting the following words, that the request for the search is proper and lawfully made for any purpose under <coughs> legislation governing the affairs or responsibilities of the body. And three, by inserting after subsection two, the following subsection two A. The competent authority shall execute a search of a company's beneficial ownership register by means of the search platform if formally requested to do so by the Financial Crime Unit of the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service. If a senior official of the unit certifies that the request for the search is in response to a request from a jurisdiction listed in Schedule 6 that has entered into an agreement with the government respecting the sharing of beneficial ownership information made, A, by a law enforcement de uh, official designated by the agreement, and B, in compliance with that agreement. R, in, or by inserting after the proposed section 264, the following section. Two, two, 264A1, the Cayman Islands Monetary Authority may, on request by the competent authority, disclose any information in its possession respecting a company or a subsidiary of a company registered or holding a license under a regulatory law as defined in section two of the Monetary Authority Law 2016 revision, that the company or a subsidiary would be, be, would be required to provide under this part as required particulars, if this part applied to the company or subsidiary. Two, for greater certainty, 
Section 50, subsection 1 of the Monetary Authority Law 2016 revision does not apply to a disclosure made under this section. S, in the proposed section 265, by inserting after subsection 2, the following subsection, 3, subject to sections 18 and 19 of the Tax Information Law 2016 revision, information deemed to be confidential under this subsection 2 shall only be disclosed in accordance with the Confidential Information Disclosure Law 2016. T, in the proposed section 2661, one, by inserting before the dash the words by the end of the period or one month beginning with the date of receipt of the notice, and two, in paragraph B1, by deleting the words by the end of the notice of one month beginning with the date of receipt of the notice. You, in the proposed section 2671C, by deleting the word right and substituting the word respect, V, in the proposed section 2691, by deleting the introdu introductory words and substituting the following words, a person commits an offense who, knowing that a relevant interest is subject to restrictions. W, in the proposed section 2731, by inserting after the words those, the word persons, X, in the proposed section 275, by inserting before the word fails, the word knowingly and willfully. Y, in the proposed section 278, by deleting the words section 2642 and substituting, substituting the words section 2642, 2A. And Z, in the proposed section 281, 1 in subsection 1, a, in paragraph C, by deleting the words a relevant legal entity referred to in that section and substituting the words the company referred to in the particulars. B, by deleting the word and at the end of paragraph G. C, in paragraph H, by deleting the full stop and inserting the words um, semicolon and. And D, by inserting after paragraph H, the following paragraph, one adding the name of any country or territory to Schedule 6 or deleting the name of any country or territory from that schedule. And two, in subsection 2A, by deleting the word and after the semicolon at the end of paragraph B, and B, by, by deleting paragraph C and D, paragraphs C and D, and substituting the following paragraph, C, by, delete, by sorry, specifying the circumstances in which a person holds an interest in a company or meets a specified condition in relation to the company, directly or indirectly, through any number of person, persons or arrangements of any description. And three, in subsection three, by deleting the, word, the words companies or subsidiaries of companies and substituting the words legal entities or subsidiaries of legal entities. The amendments have been duly moved. Does any member wish to speak there to the member from the north side? Uh, Madam Chairman, I, I want to have one question of the Attorney General. Does this volume of amendments affect the constitutionality of the bill into law in terms of the 21 days notice? Because this, once these amendments are, are agreed, this is not the law, the, the bill that was circulated for public consumption for 21 days. Honorable Attorney General. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it affects the constitutionality. It's just true that it is a um, significant set of amendments, but I think it's really for clarity more than anything else. Um, so I'm not so sure it really affects the substance of the the underlying premise of the, the bill itself is for further clarification. If uh, no. Madam Speaker, Madam Chair, I just want to make sure that we, 
you're looking at the right set of documents there. Please. The, the, the amendments that I have in my hand speak from the Confidence Amendment number two bill. I have the Confidence Amendment number two bill, 2016. That's the one the minister wants to deal with. That's what he speaks. That's what the amendment speaks. That's what it says. That's what he read. Is that the correct one, Minister? I certainly hope so, Madam Chair. Yes, I, I'm, that's what I'm looking at. So, But the bill itself doesn't say number two? That's point of reference. The bill doesn't say number two, but it was published. Uh, I am told it was published as an errata in the Gazette to rename it as number the two. company's right. amendment, number two bill, 2016. Okay. The question is, is that the amendments and part of the clause, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against no. The ayes have it. The question now is that clause two is amended, now stand part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against no. The ayes have it. Clause two as amended, now stand part of the bill. Clause three. Renumbering of section 244 and 245 of the principal law. Clause 4, amendment of the principal law, insertion of schedule 6. Clause 5, transitional provision. The question is that clauses 3, 4, and 5 stand part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Against no. The ayes have it. Clauses 3, 4, and 5 now stand part of the bill. A bill for a law to amend the company's law 2016 revision in order to require companies incorporated in the island to establish and maintain beneficial ownership registers which may be searched by the competent authority and for incidental and connecting matters. The question is that the title do stand part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against no, the ayes have it. The title now stand part of the bill. The company's management, Amendment Bill 2016, Clause 1, short titling commencement. The question is that Clause 1, son, part of the bill, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against no, the ayes have it. Clause 1, now stand part of the bill. Clause 2, subsequent amendment of company's management law, 2003 revision. Honorable Minister, you have an amendment? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, in accordance with the provisions of Standing Orders 52, 1 and 2, I, the Minister of Financial Services, Commerce and Environment, give notice to move the following amendments to the Companies Management Amendment Bill 2016. That Clause 2A of the bill be amended by deleting paragraph BA of the definition <laughs> of the definition of business of company management and substituting the following paragraph BA. Establishing and maintaining beneficial ownership registers on behalf of companies and limited liability companies incorporated or formed in the islands, uh, offering an information technology solution to those companies and limited liability companies to make extracts of information on the beneficial ownership register searchable by the competent authority established on the part Roman 17A of the company's law 2016 revision and responding to requests from the competent authority about whether a company or a limited liability company or a subsidiary of the same is exempted from the application of that, that part or of part 12 of the limited liability company's law 2016 revision. The amendment has been duly moved. Does any member wish to speak to the amendment? If not, the question is that the amendment stand part of the clause. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against no. The ayes have it. The amendment stand part of the clause. The question now is that clause two, as amended, stand part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Against no. The ayes have it. Clause two as amended. Now stand part of the bill. 
a bill for a law to amend the company's management law 2003 revision as a consequence of amendments made by the company's amendment law 2016 and the limited liabilities company's amendment law 2016. The question is that the title do sound part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against no. The ayes have it. The title now sound part of the bill. The Limited Liability Companies Amendment Bill 2016, Clause 1, Short Title and Commencement. The question is that Clause 1 sound part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against no. The ayes have it. Clause 1 now sound part of the bill. <clears throat> Clause 2, Amendment of the Limited Liability Companies Law 2016, Revision, Insertion of New Part 12. Honorable Minister, you have amendments to clause two. <laughs> yes, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, in accordance with the provisions of the Standing Order 52.1 and 2, I, the Minister of Financial Services, Commerce, and Environment, give notice to move the following amendments to the Limited Liability Companies Amendment Bill 2016. That clause two of the bill be amended as follows. A, in the proposed section 70, one, by inserting in the Appropriate alphabetical order, the following definition, quote, beneficial owner, close quote, in relation to a limited liability company has the meaning assigned by, the, by section 73, 2, comma, 3, and 4. Two, in the definition of beneficial ownership register, by inserting after the words section 80, the words contained the required particulars of registrable persons in relation to the limited liability company. Three, by deleting the definition of competent authority and substituting the following definition, competent authority means the minister referred to in section 2461 of the company's law 2016 revision and includes the person designated by the minister under that section. Four, in the definition of legal entity by <laughs> deleting the words body corporate, comma firm, and substituting the words company, comma, limited liability company. Five, by deleting the definition registrable persons and substituting the following definition, registrable person means an individual or relevant legal entity that is a registered, sorry, registrable person under section 77. Six, in the definition of relevant interest, A, by deleting paragraph A and substituting the following paragraph, A, an LLC interest, semicolon, or, and B in paragraph B by deleting the words board of, seven in the definition of required particulars by deleting the words an individual or legal entity and substituting the words a registrable person. Eight, in the definition of specified conditions by deleting the words section 73.2 and substituting the words section 73.2, comma, 3, and 4. B, in the proposed section 71, one by renumbering section 71 as section 71, one. Two, in the subsection one as renumbered, A, by deleting the words in the islands that are registered under the Limited Liability Company Law, Companies Law 2016, Law 2 of 2016, except a limited liability company or subsidiary of such limited liability company, and substituting the words and registered or, or registered by way of continuation under this law, except a legal entity or subsidiary of one or more legal entities, each of which is. B, by deleting the word, sorry, by deleting, by deleting the marginal note, uh, brackets, law two of 2016, opposite the introductory words. C, by deleting paragraph C and substituting the following paragraphs. C, managed, arranged, administered, operated, or promoted by an approved person as a special purpose vehicles, vehicle, uh, comma, private equity fund, comma, 
collective investment scheme or investment fund, CA, that is a general partner of a vehicle, fund, or scheme referred to in paragraph C that is managed, arranged, administered, or operated or promoted by an approved person or, and, and D, by deleting the marginal note 2015 revision opposite paragraph C. Three, by inserting after subsection one as renumbered the following subsection, 1A, in this section, approved person means a person or a subsidiary of a person that is A, regulated, registered, or holding a license in the islands under a regulatory law as defined in subsection two of the Monetary Authority Law 2016 revision, or registered in a jurisdiction listed in schedule three of the Money Laundering Regulations 2015 revision or B, listed on the Cayman Islands Stock Exchange or an approved stock exchange in Schedule 4 of the Companies Law 2016 revision. And 4 in subsection 2, A, by deleting the words another limited liability company and substituting the words one or more legal entities described in subsection 1. And B, by deleting paragraphs A, B, and C and substituting the following paragraphs, a, such legal entities separately or collectively hold in excess of 75% of the LLC interests with respect to profit sharing or voting rights in S or distributions of capital from S. B, each such legal entity is a member of S and separately or collectively, such legal entities have the right to appoint or remove a majority of its managers. Or C, it is a subsidiary of one or more legal entities, each of which is, is, is itself a subsidiary of, of one or more legal entities described in subsection one. C, in the proposed section 73, one in the marginal note by inserting after the word companies, the words limited liability. Two, by inserting after subsection one, the following subsection, one A, for the purpose of identifying individuals who are beneficial owners under subsection one, a limited liability company is entitled to rely without further inquiry on the re response of a person to a notice in writing sent in good faith by the limited liability company, unless it has reason to believe that the response is misleading or false. Three, in subsection two, A, in paragraph A, by deleting the words holding sorry, the word holding, and substituting the word representing. B, in, in paragraph B, by inserting after the word indirectly, the words an LLC interest in Y representing. C, by deleting paragraphs C, D, and E, and substituting the following paragraph, C, X must hold the right, directly or indirectly, to appoint or remove a majority of the managers of Y. Four, by inserting after subsection two, the following subsections. Three, if no individual meets the conditions in, in subsection two, X is a beneficial owner of limited liability company Y, if X otherwise has the absolute and unconditional legal right to exercise or actually exercises significant influence or control over Y through the ownership structure or interest described in subsection two other than in the capacity of a manager or a professional advisor. Four, if no individual meets the conditions in subsections two and three, by the trustees of a trust or the members of a partnership or other entity that under the law by which it is governed is not a legal person, meet any one of those, sorry, meet one of those conditions in relation to limited liability company Y in their capacity as such, X is a beneficial owner of Y if X has the absolute and unconditional legal right to exercise or actually exercises significant influence or control over the activities of that trust or, bar or partnership or other entity other than in the capacity of
Madam, Madam Chair, I think that's supposed to say manager or a professional advisor. Um, somehow there was a typo there. In, sorry? Right, okay. So it would be, it, the wording would be similar to the last line in subsection three, manager or a professional advisor. I don't know if I need to do any formal amendment in that respect. I think the fact that you read it in, it could be seen as a consequential okay. amendment because it's obviously a Scrivener's error. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, D, in the proposed Section 74, one in the marginal note by inserting before the word companies, the word limited liability. Two, by inserting after subsection one, the following subsection, 1A, for the purpose of identifying relevant legal entities under subsection one, a limited liability company is entitled to rely without further inquiry on the response of a legal entity to a notice in writing sent in good faith by the limited liability company unless it has a reason to believe that the response is misleading or false. Three, by deleting subsection two and substituting the following subsection. Two, a relevant legal entity in relation to a limited liability company is a legal entity that A, is incorporated, formed, or registered, including by way of continuation or as a foreign company in the islands under the laws of the islands, and B, would be a beneficial owner of the limited liability company if it were an individual. E, in the proposed section 75, one in the marginal note by inserting after the word companies, the words limited liability. Two, in subsection one, by inserting after the word notice, the words in writing. Three, in subsection two, a, by deleting the words individual or relevant legal entities and substituting the words person to whom it is addressed. And B, by inserting after the word particulars, the word required. Four, by deleting subsection three and substituting the following subsection three. A limited liability company may also give notice in writing to a member or a, or a legal entity that it, it knows or has reasonable cause to believe is a relevant legal entity in relation to that limited liability company or would be a relevant legal entity if it were registered under this law if the limited liability company knows or has reason to believe, sorry, reasonable cause to believe that such member or legal entity knows the identity of a registrable person. Five in subsection four, A by deleting Sorry, by inserting after the word supply, the words at the expense of the company, and B, by deleting the words such persons and substituting the words such registrable persons. Six, in subsection five, A, by deleting paragraph A and substituting the following paragraph A, the limited liability company knows that the individual or entity is not a registrable person or B in paragraph B by deleting the words or and substituting a full stop. And C by deleting paragraph C and seven in subsection six by deleting the word law and substituting the words law applicable in the islands. F in the proposed section 76, one in subsection one by the deleting paragraph A and substituting the following paragraph. A, the person is a registrable person in respect to a limited liability company to which this part applies. And two, in subsection two, by deleting the words, unless not a registrable person. G, by deleting the proposed sections 77 to 79 and substituting the following section. 77, one, the following are registrable persons in relation to a limited liability company. A, an individual whom the limited liability company identifies pursuant to section 73 as a beneficial owner. And B, a relevant legal entity identified by the limited liability company pursuant to section 74. 
that one directly holds an LLC interest in the limited liability company or meets one or more of the specified conditions directly in respect of that limited liability company and two, through which any beneficial owner or relevant legal entity indirectly owns an LLC interest in the limited liability company. Two, where whether a person holds an LLC interest in a limited liability company or, a, or meets a specified condition in relation to it directly or indirectly shall be determined in accordance with the regulations. H, in the proposed section 81.4, one by deleting paragraph A and substituting the following A. The limited liability company has reasonable grounds to believe that they were supplied or confirmed by the individual or entity to whom the particulars relate or, and two in, in paragra paragraph B by deleting the words after the words, the word company and substituting the following words and the limited liability company has reasonable grounds to believe that this was done with the knowledge of the individual or entity to whom the particulars relate. I, in the proposed section 82.1, one in paragraph A by deleting the word name and substituting the words full legal name, and two in paragraph D by inserting after the semicolon the words including one, identifying number, two, country of issue, and three, date of issue and of expiry. J, in the proposed section 83, one in subsection one, three, and four, by inserting before the word particulars, wherever it appears, the word required, and two in subsection two, by deleting the words or entity. K, in the proposed section 84, one by deleting subsection two and substituting the following. Two on receipt of a notice under, this, under subsection one, the company shall provide the corporate services provider with A, the missing particulars required under section 80 or 82 pertaining to registrable persons, and B, a justification or, res or correction respecting any statement identified in the notice. And two, in subsection three, A, by deleting the introductory words before the dash and substituting the following, Three, if the limited liability company fails due to the failure of a registrable person to comply with their obligations under this law to provide the missing particulars referred to in subsection 2A within one month of receipt of the notice, the limited liability company shall, and B, by deleting the words a LLC interest or other interest and substituting the words the LLC interest or other interest. L in the proposed section 85, one in subsection one, A by deleting the words or relevant legal entities and B in paragraph B by deleting the words 83 subsection four comma occurs and substituting the words 83 subsection three occurs with respect to the person. And two in subsections two and three by deleting the words or relevant legal entity, wherever they appear. M in the proposed section 87, one in sec, uh, subsections one and three by deleting the words companies register, wherever they appear and substituting the words companies beneficial ownership register. And two in subsection two by deleting the word party and substituting the word person. And by inserting after the proposed heading access to beneficial ownership information, the following section, 87A1. The competent authority shall establish a search platform by means of which access shall be provided to information on all beneficial ownership registers maintained on behalf of limited liability companies subject to this part by corporate service providers. Two, the search platform must A, be secure and accessible only by the competent authority, B, be able to search all limited liability company beneficial ownership information provided to the competent authority by corporate service providers by the name of an individual, comma, legal entity or limited liability company. And C, prevent communication. 
to any person of the fact that a search is being made or has taken place, except where the competent authority expressly discloses such communication. Oh, in the proposed section 88, one in the marginal note by deleting the words registrar and two by inserting after the dash the words enables the corporate services provider and three by deleting paragraphs A and B and substituting the following paragraphs. A, to establish and maintain the limited liability company's beneficial ownership register on behalf of the limited liability company and B, to provide information on the beneficial ownership register to the competent authority by means of the search platform established by the competent authority pursuant to section 87A. P, in the proposed section 89.1, one, one by deleting the words referred to in section 88B, if, and substituting the words, if formally requested to do so, and two, by deleting paragraphs A and B and substituting the following paragraphs, A, by a senior official referred to in section 2641 of the company's law, 2016 revision, provided that the senior official certifies that the request meets the conditions referred to in section 2642 of that law, and B, by the financial crime unit of the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, provided that a senior official of the unit certifies that the request meets the conditions referred to in section 2642A of the company's law 2016 revision. Q, by inserting after the proposed section 89, the following section, 89A1, the Cayman Islands Monetary Authority may on request by the competent authority disclose any information in its possession respecting a limited liability company or a subsidiary of a company registered or holding a license under a regulatory law as defined in subsection 2 of the Monetary Authority Law 2016 revision that the company or, or subsidiary would be required to provide under this part as required particulars if this part applied to it. And two, the for greater certainty, section 51 of the Monetary Authority Law 2016 revision does not apply to a disclosure made under this section. R in the proposed section 90, one in subsection two by deleting the words and may be disclosed only in accordance with that law, and two by inserting after subsection two the following subsection. Three, subject to sections 18 and 19 of the Tax Information Law 2016 revision, information deemed to be confidential under this section shall only be disclosed in accordance with the Confidential Information Disclosure Law 2016. S, in the proposed section 91, one in subsection 1B, A, inserting before the dash the words by the end of the period of one month beginning with the date of receipt of the notice, and B, in subparagraph B, by deleting the words by the end of the period of one month beginning with the date of, no, of receipt of the notice, and 2, in subsection 2, by deleting the words A, L, L, C, or A, L, L, C and substituting the words an LLC. T in the proposed section 92.1, one, one in paragraph C by deleting the words LLC interest may be issued in, in right and, and substituting the words additional <laughs> rights may be granted in respect. And two, in paragraph E1, by deleting the words issued with any LLC interest issued and substituting the words granted additional rights. U in the proposed section 93.1, by deleting the words uh, LLC and substituting the words an LLC. V in the proposed section 91, 94.1, by deleting the introductory words and substituting the following words a person commits an offense who, knowing that a relevant interest is subject to restrictions. W, in the proposed section 98.1, by inserting after the word those, the word persons. X, in the proposed 
section 100 by deleting the words 80 subsection 1 comma 81 subsection 2 or 2 sorry 1 or 2 or 83 subsection 2 or and substituting the words 80 comma 81 1 or 83 2 or knowingly and willfully why in the proposed section 102 1a by deleting the number 82 and substituting the number 85 z in the proposed section 103 by deleting the words 89 2 or 3 or and substituting the words 89 1 or 2 or who and ZA in the proposed section 106, one in subsection 1A in paragraph C by deleting the words a relevant legal entity referred to in that section and substituting the words the limited liability company referred to in the particulars. B by deleting the word and at the end of paragraph F and C by renaming paragraph H as paragraph G. Two in subsection 2A by inserting the word and after the semicolon at the end of, the, of paragraph D, and B by deleting paragraphs C and D and substituting the following paragraph C, specifying the circumstances in which a person holds an interest in a limited liability company or meets a specified condition in relation to it directly or indirectly through any number of persons or arrangements of any description. Three, um, in subsection 3A, by inserting after the word may, the words by affirmative resolution, and B, by deleting the words companies or subsidiaries of companies and substituting the words legal entities or subsidiaries of legal entities, and 4, by deleting subsection 4. The amendments has been duly moved. Does any member wish to speak to the amendments? If not, the question is that amendments stand part of the clause. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against, no. The ayes have it. The amendments stand part of the clause. The question now is that clause two as amended stand part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against, no. The ayes have it. Clause two now stand part of the bill as amended. Clause 3, transitional provision. The question is that Clause 3, stand part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against, no. The ayes have it. Clause 3, now stand part of the bill. A bill for a law to amend the limited liability companies law 2016 in order to require limited liability companies registered in the island to establish and maintain beneficial ownership register to enable the registers to be searched by the competent authorities, authority design designated under the company's law 2016 and for incidental and connected matters. The question is that the title signed part of the bill. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against, no. The ayes have it. The title now stand part of the bill. The question is now that the bills be reported to the House. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against, no. The ayes have it. The bills will accordingly be reported to the House. Please be seated. The House will now resume. Report on bills. The company's amendment number two, bill 2016. Honorable Minister for Financial Services. Madam Speaker, I'm to report that a bill shortly entitled the company's amendment number two, bill 2016, was considered by a committee of the whole house and passed with amendments. The bill has been duly reported. 
and is set down for third reading. The company's management amendment number two, bill 2016. Honorable Minister for Financial Services. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that a bill shortly entitled the company's, sorry, I have to report a, that a bill entitled, shortly entitled the company's management amendment number two, bill 2016, was considered by a committee of the whole house and passed with an amendment. The bill has been duly reported and set down for third reading. The limited liability company's amendment bill 2016. Honorable Minister for Financial Services. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm to report that a bill shortly entitled the limited liability company's amendment bill 2016 was considered by a committee of the whole house and passed with a lot of amendments. <laughs> the bill has been duly reported and is set down for its third reading. Third readings, the company's amendment number two bill 2016. Honorable Minister for Financial Services. Madam, Madam Speaker, I I beg to move that a company shortly, a uh, bill shortly entitled the Company's Amendment Number Two, Bill 2016, be given a third reading and passed. The question is that the Company's Amendment Number Two, Bill 2016, be given a third reading and passed. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against, no. The ayes have it. The Company's Amendment Number Two, Bill 2016, has been read a third time and is passed. The company's management, amendment number two, bill 2016. Honorable Minister for Financial Services. Thank you, um, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that a bill shortly entitled the company's management amendment number two, bill 2016, be given a third reading and passed. The question is that a bill shortly entitled the company's management amendment number two, bill 2016, be given a third reading and passed. Sorry. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Against, no. The ayes have it. The company's management amendment bill number two. The company's management amendment number two bill 2016 has been read a third time and is passed. The limited liability company's amendment bill 2016. Honorable Minister for Financial Services. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I beg to move that a bill shortly entitled the Limited Liability Companies Amendment Bill 2016 be given a third reading and passed. The question is that a bill shortly entitled the Limited Liability Companies Amendment Bill 2016 be given a third reading and passed. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Against, no. The ayes have it. The Limited Liability Companies Amendment Bill 2016 has been read a third time and is passed. Recognize Honorable Premier. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <coughs> Madam Speaker, before I move the adjournment of this Honorable Excuse House, me. I just wish to express my gratitude and that of the government and the minister in particular for the cooperation of all members of this House present uh, with respect to, to this matter and for agreeing to uh, allow the House to go into committee to deal with these two very, three very important bills and for the cooperation and full support of the efforts the government is making to ensure that we are in full compliance uh, with the agreement we've made with the United Kingdom government with respect to this beneficial ownership issue. It is critical, Madam Speaker, to, to the financial services industry. It is, the passage of these bills is part of the agreement which we have with them that on the basis of this platform that these bills help to create so that law enforcement agencies in Cayman can respond quickly and accurately to requests from law enforcement agencies in the United Kingdom instead of us being forced down the road 
to create central public registers. And so we want to be able to demonstrate that we are on target to meet those, those objectives and those commitments, which the expiration date for which is, I believe, June. And so, Madam Speaker, again, my gratitude and that of the government and the minister in particular to all members of the House for understanding and cooperating. I think it is a good indication of how serious all members of the House take this matter. And so, so Madam Speaker, I move the adjournment of this Honorable House until Wednesday, the 8th of March at 10 a.m. Recognize the fourth elected member from Bottentown. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in accordance with standing order 11.6 and 11.7, I'd like to make a statement which is a matter of national importance. Please Would proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, further to the personal statement read today in this honorable house by the fifth elected member from Georgetown, where he made mention of mention of the concern that a private investigation services firm has allegedly been hired to gather information on certain independent members of the Legislative Assembly for nefarious purposes, I wish to further advise this Honorable Assembly that the independent members have been reliably informed through our own investigative resources that one, there are in fact three individuals posing as visitors currently in Grand Cayman. These individuals are traveling in rental cars and are now carrying out private, private investigations into certain independent members of this Honorable Assembly. Two, it has been reported to the independent members that these individuals have allegedly been hired by one or more local law firms and that this action is directly linked to our opposition of the upcoming Legal Practitioners Bill. Madam Speaker, as a matter of national importance, I am therefore requesting that this matter be immediately investigated by the RCIPS, the Attorney General's Office, and the Immigration Department, as the actions of these individuals and their clients is a direct threat to the safety and well-being of members of this Honorable Assembly and our families, and may constitute a breach of several laws, including the immigration law. Madam Speaker, we ask that we ask that the proper authorities take any and all legally permissible actions to apprehend and question these individuals, and that immediate steps be taken to ensure the safety and protection of all members of this Legislative Assembly. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The question is, is that this Honorable House be now adjourned until Wednesday, the 8th day of March at 10 a.m. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Against no. The ayes have it. The House now stands adjourned until uh, Wednesday next, the 8th day of March at 10 a.m. <laughs>